there is my gear rain jacket and backpack unpacked this here is the campsite good old number seven Jones Gap State Park you can see that um, right over there is the river and we're going to set up camp Okay, it's about an hour later. I guess you could say it's about 12, 15. Uh, here is my tent. I got it set up so you can see. If you can see, I got it. I put them laminar at my feet. And there's my pillows. And that's my new air mattress. I'm testing that out. This is my pillow bag extension because I'm too fat to fit in that bag. I can fit into it, it's just not very comfortable. So I did a little bit of jerry rigging. Of course, there's my camp shoes and water and my mess kit. There's my leftover gear. Most of it's out. And here's my shelter. There's a fire ring, and it doesn't look like a whole lot from the camera, but that's my firewood. And there's another spot up the hill that I can get some more of it. So, oh, and of course the ranger made sure I, I was aware of this. There is, if you can see it. I don't know if the camera's jerky or not, but there's my food bag, and I've got it 12 feet off the ground. I think maybe a little higher. I don't know. That's to keep critters and bears or whatever out of my chow, which I think I'm going to whip me up something to eat because I haven't eaten yet today, and I'm kind of hungry. So I do want to hit the trail by 1 o'clock, which will give me about four and a half hours on the trail. I don't think I'm going to make as far as I want, but should be a little bit closer than we were last time. Ooh. Just want to get a shot of the ripper. I don't know if I'm going to come down here to this in. I can't really see it from the trees, can you? All right. I do have some neighbors, uh, some people camping in site six. Look at that. Look at that water. Cold as a witch's city in Alaska. But pretty clear. We've uh, filtered water out of this river before. I think I'm going to go to a stream that's just right down the trail. Get my water this time. I don't know, maybe because there's less deer shit in it. I don't know. Cause I'm a pansy ass. I don't care. I don't care what you think either. I want to do it anyway. Okay. Well, I'm gonna make me some grub, and uh, I'm gonna hit the trail. See you in a while. I turn it off. Oop. Okay, I am starting down the trail at 20 minutes to 1. I don't think I'm going to make it all, but I'm going to give it a try. I guess I got about two and a quarter hours to walk, and then I got to turn back to make sure I make it up the mountain before sunset. Here it is, and I'll be back in a bit. Okay, right there is the red blaze that goes off to Rainbow Falls. There's a couple people 
going to be walking up a tall mountain. Been there, done that two times. I'll pass. This way is onward on Jones Gap Trail. Looks prettier in real sight, in real life. It's uh, scenes like this that makes you beg the question, how long does one need to live in the south before they can get tired of this? All right. Let me get control of my camera here. Jones Gap Falls. This is uh, another one of those reasons why you can never get tired of the south. Right there's the trail that I came from. Right there's the trail that I'm going to. And this way is the falls. I'm going to go ahead and walk it. Camera might be a little bouncy. Shit. All right, out in the middle of the wilderness, Jones Gap Falls. Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Okay. Here I am at Cold Spring Branch Trail and Jones Gap Trail. This way here is Jones Gap. This is where I came from. Also, Jones Gap Trail, and this is Cold Spring Branch Trail. Heading down, uh, heading down there. Right here in this general area is where Maria and I stopped and had uh, some granola bars. So, I have made it to the same spot that we made it to the last time we was here. It took us about two hours because I'm kind of slow, but this time I made it in an hour and 15 minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and move on. I'm at, uh, I'm on bonus time now. It's about two o'clock. Um, I think fatigue and hunger is gonna make me turn around at three. Yeah, yeah, three o'clock. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, I'm looking at a river. This is another river along the Cold Spring Trail. And I think I'm gonna quit because I'm hungry and it keeps going up and up and up and up and up and if you I don't know if you can see but beyond those trees is all mountain so you know and that's whew, 
this is where I came from. Yeah. I'm 46 years old. I'm kind of fat. Certainly fat and out of weight, uh, out of shape, and, and I'm hungry. <laughs> I think I burnt last night's pizza off. I'm gonna head back. You know, it's uh, it's after two. Been on the trail for you know further than what we were last time, about an hour and a half. So it's, it's an hour back. I'm a pussy. I'll talk to you in a bit. Okay. I tried to uh, go ahead and walk to the top. And I got to as far as I could see. And I don't know if you can really tell, but it just keeps going and going. And I'm like, I don't know, halfway, maybe a little more than halfway to the top from my last little video thing there. I ain't going any further. Holy shit. But I thought I'd give it a shot just to see what was on the top. I gotta get on the treadmill, man. Fuck. Okay, I have made it back. I am now right um, there is a bridge to the ranger station. The ranger station's over there. And my campsite is over there. So it is about 2.35. So just right under two hours hiking. Got further than a uh, we did last time, and actually quite a bit shorter amount of time to get there. Didn't hike as long as I wanted to, but uh, you know, give me right. It's only my second hiking trip on this side of the mountain. See you in the camp. Yeah, I had to stop for a second because those two pieces of wood, those two sticks up on that rock, I put there about a month ago just out of curiosity to see if they would still be there the next time that we came my wife would call that a form of Asperger's but there they are untouched okay I'm now back at my campsite and looks like I want to be trying to uh, start myself a fire here a little bit maybe cook up some grub because I'm starving and uh, nobody messed around with my camp so I guess that's cool <clears throat> I'm not really sure why anybody would but thought just that crossed my mind I wonder if that's a uh, bear scratches I guess if a bear comes in and and uh, messes with me, well, no, it's a bear. So, I'm going to try to start myself a fire. Uh, may take me a few minutes to get all ready for that. And I'll try to uh, demonstrate my petroleum jelly fire starter. Okay. So I'm going to try to attempt to show you a technique I actually learned on YouTube and it is, this is petroleum jelly in a cotton ball that I wrapped up in cellophane. I use cellophane because um, it just makes it less messy. So I take my lighter. And I just keep a lighting and assuming the wind don't blow my lighter out. Yeah, in a second.
Okay, so you see it's trying to burn. I'm gonna let her get lit a little bit. Once it gets it going, it's almost like a little candle. So I, I'm gonna put her down there. Yeah. Ouch. Alright, so hopefully it'll stay burning. I might need to get a little more air. Kinda acts like a little candle. And I get my little twin, my little kindling going. That uh, petroleum jelly will burn for actually quite a while, giving you a chance to get your kindling going. I didn't see that guy. And then I can start adding little bigger twigs here. She's still burning. I'm blowing on it. There you go, keep it burning. And then later I'll get something going. So, you can see that's working. Hopefully that uh, trolling jelly will keep it burning long enough to get my wood going. Seems to be working. I'll be back. Okay. So you can see that I found a grate to put on top. Looks like somebody's you know, charcoal grill that they left out here. Works for me. You can see my firewood. I know that uh, that's not a whole bunch of firewood, but uh, I'm not planning on starting a fire at all tomorrow morning. I'm just going to use my stove and make some coffee and whatnot. But you can see I got a pretty big fire going, all from a cotton ball and petroleum jelly. So I'm going to, it is about a quarter to five, and I'm really hungry so I'm gonna make myself something to eat and probably dark by the time I get back to the camera so <clears throat> might get just a little bit more footage in before the night's out and then we'll see if I freeze my ass off alright talk to you in a while Okay, so I got ramen cooking and I got beef stroganoff, which I'm just um, starting to, to eat here. It's, uh, it's good. It's good stuff. These, these things are expensive, but uh, they're good. They taste good and they're lightweight. Um, of course, they're really good when you're hungry and I'm starving. Oh. One thing I did notice, everything's a learning curve, is this handle here, unless you grip on it, well, if I lose, I split my ramen all over the place. 
So I lost a bag of ramen. So I'm cooking up another batch of ramen to replace my lost ramen. Oh, okay. Fire's going good. Tent's all set up. I'm starting to eat now. Water's okay. Oh. It's nice out here. I, uh, it'd be nice if Maria was out here with me. She's a much better conversationalist than I am with myself, I guess. It is about, uh, it's about 20 after 5. Still got a couple hours worth of uh, daylight, I guess, before it gets dark. I'll probably go to bed around 9 o'clock or so. Because it'll probably just be too cold to do anything else. So... I suppose unless something else happens, I'm going to go ahead and shut off the camera for tonight and uh, see what happens in the morning time. Ramen! <clears throat> okay, it's morning time. It's about 8.30-ish. I wasn't even going to make a fire, but it was really cold this morning, so I used to what little left of my firewood to get the fire started it's burning a little bit better but I burned up the small stuff I didn't, uh, I didn't go out and get any more I'm not going to be here very long uh, I'm telling you petroleum cotton balls really work good this is kind of cool my water didn't actually freeze last night but when I put it in my my uh, titanium cup here it immediately turned to ice so I mean, right in front of my eyes. That's how cold it is. So, got my stuff out. I'm going to start packing up pretty quick. I didn't get out of bed until the sun came up because I was just, it was cold. And my zipper broke on my zipper, or my sleeping bag. So, thank goodness I had my, my Velcroed on sleeping bag extension I made the other day. That helped keep me warm. Oh, it's a chilly day. I need to get me some kind of thermostat to tell how cold it is, but I know it's uh, got to be in the upper 30s, lower 40s at best. All right, I'm going to get me some coffee going. Me in the morning time. I'm not sure what I look like, but... Pasta. It's a... Uh, Outdoor Research Gore-Tex jacket. It's got what they call vertical venting, which allows you to unzip up on the sides, cool you down. Excellent jacket. Love it. Of course, there's my sleeping bag, which zipper broke. I'm pissed. But uh, I guess I'll, I'm not going to fix the zipper. I'm just going to put Velcro on the side to Velcro it. Vel Velcro it close. Miscellaneous bag with all my other shit in it. I got to make that smaller somehow. Of course, there's my Yellow one's my food bag. Food bag. And, uh, you know, the mountain dehydrated food is great. Kind of expensive, but stroganoff was really good last night. Of course, I was hungry. There's my air mattress. It's not very wide. It's only about 20 inches wide, but it's uh, certainly long enough and worked great. Works much better than the Walmart uh, air mattress I bought. It's about a pound. The air mattress I bought from Walmart, air pad, self-inflating pad, was almost two and a quarter pounds. There's my pillows and blanket bag. I gotta do something about that. I like my pillows though. Of course there's my stove. I didn't even need to use that this trip because I had a fire going. There's my tent, which I'm on the fence about the tent. Uh, it certainly does keep you warmer because I had the front of it open just to the fly net and uh, I can certainly get a breeze on my shoulders and face. And even with my sleeping bag zipper broken and from everything from my knees down was open, I didn't get too I didn't get cold on my feet at all. The foot box in that is really good. This is my little tarp. I got that at Walmart, I think for nine bucks. It's pretty good. That works pretty good. I like that. And my clothes bag. Way too big, way too many clothes. I overpacked because it was supposed to be cold, but uh, all I needed was 
I have two military jacket liners. Uh, I only really needed one of them, so I didn't get too cold as far as, uh, you know, except I got a little cold last night while I was sleeping. Of course, the rope, rope worked okay, but I brought that because I lost my blue rope. Of course, there's my backpack, there's my top bag with my gloves, and I can't find my hoodie. I can't believe it, my little ski mask. Second time I have lost that. It does not like me. It's got to be here somewhere. I have searched the whole entire campground. It was, I was wearing it last night when I was by the fire, so a uh, raccoon must have come and decided to put it on. These are alpaca socks. Better than wool in my opinion. A pair of poly pro socks and alpaca socks are the best way to go. There's my logging stick. And that's my couple extra bags with my um, backpack wet weather cover. And I highly recommend uh, a backpack cover, not only keep your backpack dry, but um, you know, I get all my stuff out. I just dump it inside this bag, pull it tight, and it turns into kind of a big storage bag. It works really good. So used it as a pillow. There's my Crocs, which are very nice. My little Walmart water bag. That worked out pretty good. And uh, that's my mess kit. Oh, I like it a lot. Except I found out last night that the, the handle will collapse on you if you don't hold on to it. Good. That's how I spent all my, spilled all my ramen. Here's the campsite. <clears throat> As you can see, it is pretty much leave no trace. In fact, it might be a little bit cleaner because I picked up some other people's trash. So, that's it. I accomplished what I wanted to accomplish and froze my ass off, but I still had a pretty good time. I imagine uh, 10 o'clock I got, I didn't get fully packed, but I got everything packed by 10, but man, my hands are cold. I had to keep stopping and warming up by the fire. Maria's probably at work right now, and I have got to get off this mountain by 1 o'clock, or she's going to call somebody. That's my notify time. I told her I'd call her by 1 or something happened. So I'm going to go ahead and pack out of here and it'll be the end of the trip see you at the car okay haven't made quite to the car yet but wanted to take a look at my backpack when it's fully packed so all that stuff except for my jacket and my walking stick is inside that pack so it should weigh probably about it doesn't have any water on it now, so oh, 38 pounds maybe. I'm not really sure. One thing I am pretty sure of is um, not counting water. Uh, even with the food that I have left in there, I probably could easily camp out for three more days. Two days if I wanted to eat a lot. So, I think... Um, Counting the kind of food that I brought and what I have in there, uh, a three-day camping trip easy. One thing's for certain. One thing's for certain. One thing's for certain. Uh, <clears throat> I can't. Uh, I can't get away from ultralight camping anymore. This is so much lighter and just as effective as uh, traditional camping, which I've done most of my life. So, the two things I do know I need to work on is my tent. Uh, my tent plus my clothes and this pack took up more than half of my pack in in volume which uh, I know I can do a lot better on that I'm on the fence on what to do about that of course I'm, I'm definitely thinking hammock I don't know if my back will dig that or not uh, I'm thinking bivy I'm just not sure about the wet weather I gotta tolerate just about anything else for the bivy, but um, oh, that remains to be seen. I'm gonna pause you and walk out to the car once I get it on the back. Oh, I'll tell you what, Let's set this over here.
Alright. Now I'm just gonna walk out. You'll see how long of a hike it was in here. There's my campsite. Probably see you in oh maybe next weekend. Maybe if not next weekend then in three weeks. There's not a not a whole lot, but up this hill a little bit, there's some deadfall that you might be able to get some firewood out of. I, I didn't get it because I didn't need it, but you guys, you can probably use it. Yeah, yeah, on the other side of these rocks, it's not much, but it's got a lot of killing. I mean, I used it uh, all last night, last night, so. Yeah. Alrighty. Do 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 There's a ranger station. I asked the ranger in there about trail maintenance volunteering. Took my email address. Hopefully, uh, maybe they'll put me some, give me some work. Not unpaid, of course. Howdy. There's some, I don't know if there's any hikers around there. I love this park. No matter what kind of camping you like, unless you need electricity, this is a place to come to. And it's got uh, water, obviously. It's also got a bathroom that's got potable water in it. Look at that. The whole entire trail walks along a river like this, mainly this one, but I've seen at least two different rivers on my hike yesterday. That's where I started. Definitely good exercise. It makes dehydrated beef stroganoff taste really good. Here's another cool thing about the south, particularly when you get up around North Carolina. I don't know if you can see that, but that's like a miniature little waterfall river. They're all over the place. There's one on each side of my campsite. Makes you wonder where all this water's coming from. I say that every time I come up here. I think it's bugging Maria that I say it too much. Where is all that water coming from? I just can't believe it. Oh, my car's still here. Whew. 10 20. Not bad. Okay. Uh, Trip's over. I'm gonna load up the car, go on home. I might finish this video off after I unpack because I want to unpack clean and dry my gear. Always unpack, clean, and dry your gear. I was informed the other day that one of my air mattresses were thrown away because it was left in a wet pack 
for so long it was just too moldy to salvage. That's about 30, 40 bucks, man. Thanks for treating my property nicely. All right, that's it. See you all in a bit. Okay, I had to, had to show you this. That's frozen. I left this bottle of water in my car so I'd have a bottle left over. So they definitely got below freezing last night. <laughs> Shit. Anyway. Okay, I made it back home safe and sound. Everything is here. This is it. This is all I took on the campsite. My stick and that bag. And there I am. Still sane and alive. Uh uh, I guess uh, every uh, ultralight camping is kind of a learning experience and I this is my uh, outdoor research um, Gore-Tex rain jacket which was invaluable worth the money I love it wish I'd got it sooner my sleeping bag was not so good my zipper broke on it so it caused me a little bit of chili problems last night I think I'm going to fix that with Velcro. Um, my cook set worked out pretty good. I liked it. Used it once already. I really do think that worked out pretty good. Of course, my my boots are done good. This is my second uh, hiking pan, uh, convertible pants. They worked out really good. My Paul Pros worked out really good. Overall, it was a short but um, pretty successful camping trip. So, this is... Um, I'm going to call this camping trip number one in my video series of camping trips and hopefully I'll get a little bit better at it as time goes by. So, see you later and bye-bye.